Th this is why I, why I try to restrain it, why I try to hold it back, because I was thinking maybe there might be an egoic desire within me to say this, but actually my ego tried to keep this secret. So my ego was in resistance to opening up to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had this. I had the same. I had the exact same issue. Probably because I saw everybody thinking they had a walk-in experience from some other entity that they were this and they were that. And next thing you know, there's five Ankies, thirteen Isises, and twelve Marduks in the same room. You know, I'm I'm mm. the one incarnating that one. You know, it's, mm. so uh, anyway, I, I actually did a video. To dealing with the archetypes <laughs> and thinking, you know, are we that one? Are we this one? Uh, which one are we? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when when people start waking up, and for example, there there is a there is a certain danger, not ultimately, but relatively, there's a certain danger with practicing Kundalini yoga. And the danger with with this is, if you're not practiced in in mindful meditation. If you're not practiced in Zazen, for example, for a long time, when you deal with those strong energies, our egos have a tendency to draw identity from experience. Mm -hmm. So we experience something and we say, I'm this. And the danger is when we, when we start Kundalini Yoga and those very intense past life memories are reoccurring, that our ego suddenly wants to identify with this and create a new form of ego. Yes, it's moving. Right? So while I was in this integration process, I didn't want to speak about it for the very simple reason, because I wasn't sure. Yeah? I needed to go through the process to understand if me speaking about it, it was an egoic motivation or not. Because the thing is, when we draw identity for mystical experience, this is psychosis. Mm. This is what happens to people. You cannot go through certain gates with the ego still present, because when you do that, psychosis is what happens. Wow. You know what? That That is a very profound thing you just said right there. But Because I think you can get up to a gate, a certain gate, and certain lessons you have to learn at each of your chakra gates, right? <laughs> Typically, and this is what uh, I wrote this out on the table. This one controls this one, and these are the lessons you got to get. Here's the action. Energy. Um, but if you if you get up against in general if you get up against a lesson and you're resisting it it persists it keeps coming back to you right so right yes. at the, right at the point where if you keep resisting it and you're at the gate uh, I used to say you get thrown back into the hot boiling oil of transformation until mm -hmm. you get until you get that lesson because you don't go through the gate until you got it it's just set up that way and part of that is subjugation of the ego. And purification of your consciousness. These are alchemical principles as well. And uh, speaking of that, uh, I just want people to know we have some questions from la uh, the last show, and I'll keep those toward the end, so if we get to the place where you're done talking and just want to answer a few of these real mm -hmm. quick, um, we'll cue that up, okay? Yeah. There's something that you said right now that is very profound, because this is something that I notice when, when I teach uh, meditation is that when people start practicing zazen and they start watching their breath of course there's 